Sure. So, uh, just before we wrap up this call, uh, if anyone wants to introduce themselves, uh, please go ahead. Like, uh, I would love to know about you in case you are fine and comfortable. Sure, sure. I wish it. Uh, I'll... Yeah, I'm a data scientist in Snapdeal right now. And I, I just completed one year of my like full-time job. So like uh, the thing is like I, I tried to do more personal projects and then convert it into industry level projects. So that's why I like uh, like what do I like to do like new things. And even I'm following you for about six months. So I think I have tried your dynamic pricing thing and I, I was able to convert it into an industry project like Snapdeal wow. Mera oh, and yeah. even the recommendation systems that are working in Snapdeal uh, like uh, the pin sage model the pin trust model like I tried it I think I'm fine tune it hmm. so, oh, yeah. awesome uh, like yeah. gives me like uh, it's very satisfying to know that some of the uh, videos that I just made it uh, randomly it creates impact later. And also one of the guys I met recently, uh, he cracked um, two companies uh, where it was more, the, the role was more around causal inference and he was able to crack it by watching one of my videos on uplift modeling. So like, it's really satisfying. Like never, you never thought when you're making a uh, content, you just, you just learn a, a concept, you do more research around it and you make something and later people found it, find it useful. And even it sometimes it helps them give it get a job or as you said in your case convert it into a full time project in your company it's a very big thing so <laughs> yeah, you get new I, I i get new ideas from your videos and like i try to search more about it and even like jawab nikalte then i get a good prospect yaar ye ho sakta hai to ye bhi ho sakta hai kuch aur definitely and, yeah so uplift modeling like you said uplift ho sakta hai so like amazon does is causal MLE jo hai, do I. So I tried a different method from that. Ki mujhe mm-hmm. idea laga ki yaar, uplift hai, to hum ek RCA sakte So I tried that path also. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And I, I had a one question for you as well. Malab, ye thi. See, uh, like Lama and all jo LLMs hai, I wanted to know more about the use cases in industry level ki aapke dimaag mein you have like two, three use cases. Yeah. How do you see these being deployed overall? So, uh, Abhishek, sorry to interrupt because my question was on similar lines. So, yeah. So, we work with a lot of people who has, you know, on-premise software and they use on-premise softwares because they are very much concerned about that data. They do not want to go it out live on internet, even passes through the wires, right? So, and that's why the fine tuning is kind of thing that we want that, you know, we'll keep the models on that data center. They literally have the data centers. So just wanted to know that uh, with all the work you have done, uh, was there any where, where you have literally put this model on the, you know, on a real industry use case where it gave the really good results in the sense that we know that open AI's models are the largest one, right? It's in terms of billion parameters, Llama and all those things are good. they no doubt on that, but compared to open AI, they are still in infancy, I would say in terms of the billion parameters, right? So just wanted to know that because the question was kind of on similar line. Yeah, I'll so, so let you know. So what I feel is that definitely chat GPT is chat GPT. No questions asked. It's next level. The output of it on uh, the, the way it is able to generalize on different tasks, able to understand the context. No other model at present has that capability. But when for an industry where we come up with an idea or for a particular project, uh, we have a specific task in mind, right? So for those kind of specific tasks, as I saw in the example as well, you can definitely fine tune it on that specific task and it will give you as good result as chat GPT or like much satisfactory results. That is one thing. And second part on the, uh, like more around the security part, the data being transferred. So even I haven't, I have a concern on that. So what I usually would prefer is I am trying my heart, uh, my, my best to somehow make this 
uh, open source LLMs like Llama V2 work faster so that I don't have to pass my data to chat GPT. Even if I do the fine tuning, the model will be stored in their server. So instead of that, in this open source LLMs, Llama V2, I, the everything from fine tuning to uh, passing data and everything is happening in single GPU that we have the control on that is on our GPU. So I would prefer these open source LLM uh, because mostly it will be a, a, a ta specific task. I will fine tune for the specific task and you uh, keep the uh, keep the model within um, uh, a GPU, which which I have full control on. And uh, secondly, production use case. I feel that production use case as of now, uh, like real time production use case, I haven't seen because there is a latency in these models. Real time yeah, latency is very high, right? So like, with, that, with that latency, will we be able to uh, productionize it in future? Uh, in future, the latency will reduce. So maybe, but at present, not in real time systems, but I'm seeing uh, or using it a lot in uh, batch modes. For example, I have to pro provide some uh, output so I can just process my data in batch mode, generate the results and uh, keep that batch job uh, running every few hours. But that is one thing. And secondly, I can use it to enrich my features. I can create features out of it. I can pass some information, create some features and those features I can use it in my model. So in this way, uh, doing that batch processing, I, uh, it's usable at present state given the current latency and uh, on data security, like I would prefer an open so source LLM, which I can find you. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I want to ask one question. Uh, you are explaining the fine tuning with LoRa, right? Have you also tried the uh, RLHF with reinforcement learning human feedback? No, no, I haven't tried that. For that, he needs a lot of people. <laughs> so, obviously, one question from me, my side. So, so, like Microsoft is also providing uh, uh, private uh, charge GPT kind of thing. Is it safe to use for enterprise purpose? Uh, so, yes, yes. So, what they do is, as much I know, uh, they have this toggle button on and off. When it's on, uh, it won't send your data outside. Like that data, it everything will be uh, like it's like you have documents, you have the company's documents, confluence, and codes, everything. When you keep that button on, it it won't send any information out uh, outside. Everything will remain inside, even fine tuning. Everything will remain. Uh, nothing will be no problem of data leakage is what they tell. So yeah, it's a it's a good approach. It's uh, many companies will prefer that because company's data is its oil, is its everything. So uh saving that data and saving those strategies those codes uh definitely companies will prefer it and it's a good concept anyone else who would like to introduce themselves maybe turn on video no no <laughs> it's not a i'll introduce video. myself uh, and or i like others speak i'm speaking a lot in this video so <laughs> i'll go last oh it's okay i'm okay good uh, i'm searching here so I'm currently working as a data scientist mm. in Happiest Minds. Mm. So nice to meet you here and connect here. Like the, the your, your YouTube channel and uh, recently following from, from two or three months. And uh, so I just expect to uh, put the latest, whatever the uh, uh, chat GPT related or this Llama model, this uh, LLM models things going on to uh, make uh, videos on the same data stuff. So. Definitely. So uh, at, at my work, I am working on recommendation system, actually recommendation system and advertisement platform. Uh, along with that, uh, like these Llama V2 and all those things, all, all the LLM stuff. Uh, it's like if some use case comes, we try it. But uh, moreover, I am working on recommendation system, advertisement platform, uplift modeling, causal inference. So videos will keep coming on industry. Uh, uh, type problems or interesting projects and as well as videos will keep coming on LLMs. One more thing, uh, like uh, the, there is recent uh, hype is going around the Gorilla model. Uh, like mm. anything, uh, the content is coming on that model or like? Uh, I, yeah, yeah I, I read about it, but uh, very briefly, I don't have much context on it. Someone had said I didn't get a lot of time to go into it, but yeah, it uh, seems promising. And also one more thing. Uh, we need to be very careful, uh, careful as in like uh, we have limited time, right? Limited time office, bhi hota hai, sab kuch hota hai. 
we need to be careful uh, between trends and things which are uh, there to stay so uh, like something comes as a trend for a trend for example this auto gpt concept of auto gpt came now no one is talking about it so uh, what i do is when something new comes no i just wait to understand whether it's a trend or something just a first which, which will go away or is that something that will that is there to stay so when i feel that yes llama v2 it's there to stay matlab it's doing best among all the open source llms i will do a deep dive of it so that is one strategy i use to uh, save my time and keep uh, researching on topics like i will do research on my work as well recommendation systems and all so when something seems very promising and i feel it's not a fuzz and it's not a like short term trend but something which is there uh, to stay then i do more uh, research or reading around it it's just okay, i see i have two more question for you go ahead yes. go ahead so one question is like uh, please uh, make a videos on the interview preparation about this uh, the language models and uh, uh, second one is that the the utsa uh, has just said about like ascii thing uh, to get the pdf uh, embeddings sure. Sure. Uh, that content it will be very helpful if you make a video on that. Either you or so can able to share the content. Sure. I don't have a YouTube channel. Sorry. Abhishek is doing. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. can at least share the yeah. any yeah, yeah, blog or any material with the code. Sure, sure. That inspires me to write a blog. I'm very lazy. Sorry. <laughs> no, no. Everyone should share the knowledge in some. Yeah, way. I agree. uh okay i'll go ahead so yeah just to introduce uh, uh hi guys i'm utsav and uh, i'm right now uh, a lead at uh, trilogy innovations which earlier used to known as uh, code nation yeah and right now we are all in in the generative ai kind of stuff so exploring that awesome anyone else who would like to introduce yeah. them hi so i'm joshita and hi. i'm a data scientist at cred currently uh, and i work mostly on uh, nlp related uh, use cases and uh, recently right uh, since few months i'm extensively just going through and then reading a lot of stuffs and all regarding all the relevance and yeah doing some experiments on that so that is awesome anyone else uh hello uh, i will go ahead uh, my name is aditi and i have 8 months of experience in data science so i have just started you know with um, like class i started my career with building classical machine learning models for predictive modeling and stuff so i have just entered into the realm of generative ai so all your videos and all your materials are helping a lot so yeah thank you thank you aditi Ajinkya, would you like to go next? Hello, uh, myself Ajinkya. Uh, I, actually, I am a mechanical engineer and exploring the field of data science. And mm-hmm. I have gone through your YouTube channel, and I have found some very interesting projects in it. And I am currently trying to uh, get into this field. Okay. Best of luck. Best of luck. You will do great. Thank you, sir. just ensure that uh, you start with the basics fundamentals which can be linear regression logistic regression basic statistics concept probabilities so once you feel more comfortable with these concepts and then you can jump into llms as well but uh, you you can do llms as well but i will suggest that uh, ensure your the fundamentals which i just talked about are also very strong yeah yeah sir i, I am working on it and i will definitely do it thank sure. you sir. Uh, Satya. Uh, yeah. Hi. So I am Satya Pati, working as a data scientist in in Bolet, with two year of experience and mostly working with the recent trending topic Gen AI, <laughs> on which I have taken help from Abhishek as well previously. So yeah, this is all about me. Thanks. Thank you. What Kito. was your company name? In Bolet. Yeah. Uh, Kesal. बेस्ट कंसल्टेंसी फॉर्म एक्चुअली हम्म केतन वुड यू लाइक टू गो नेक्स्ट 
maybe i can go next uh, hi abhishek thank you first of all you are exploring the new side of the things as i never thought that the, this thing i will be going to work on so myself akshay currently it's been like one year i'm working around analytics so i'm a data analyst uh, in a pharmaceutical based company and uh, uh, i worked till now i worked on excel sql and python so i made the, the basics clear now i am just exploring this side of the projects or the things i can edit edit in, into some real life projects so thanks for the knowledge yeah awesome awesome thanks yeah. uh manas maybe hey abhishek manas is sir i'm currently working as associate machine learning scientist at vadwani ai uh currently exploring the i mostly have worked in nlp so really excited about this llm space i've mm-hmm. been trying out a uh, few models but uh, in general uh, you know i just had a a open ended question like what do you, what are your thoughts on you know at the recent uh, ai boom or you know there are lots of startups coming up um, early stage startups who are basically building products especially using chat gpt models or any llm so is it is it a good time to you know uh, work at some pl- like work at that place or it's you know still you think that it's it's a bit early <laughs> so that's a tricky question uh, because uh, many startups have started using this technology but i also feel many startups have closed because of this technology uh check is an example check that question answering thing it's uh, uh if you would have seen its shares have yeah. really dropped uh with coming of these as well as um, i feel companies which are at risk are cora uh and so on so uh it i we have to i i feel that we have to think and take a call because if let's say one company is working on um, let's say next level image generation we need to understand that what is the long term vision like what okay, image is one thing what pose that do do they have a long term maybe nowadays there is no long term but at least 6 months to 1 year long road may what they don't with what they want to do what they they, they uh, the product they want to build and as well it it depends a lot on the uh, profile of people for me uh, i have worked in mnc as well as a startup the thing that matters the most is uh, the talent around me so if you go through a company and even if they have a simple idea but if you see that people who are working there are good their their profile is good then definitely it's worth exploring and uh, i feel explore karna bura nahi hai but thoda sa uh, with uh, little attention towards these things that is the idea really that great or do they have a long term road map and type of people who are working on it so the, seeing all of these and definitely the um, compensation and all you can take a call got it got it yeah i think what like what i feel from this is like it's very hard yeah in order hard. to you know compare these two things it's like i'm finding it pretty hard so <laughs> i'm talking to as much people as possible but yeah, yeah i think it's actually hard because uh, uh if you what i feel is that in future uh there will be less of engineers needed less of data scientists needed everything like previously what you would have needed 10 people engineering team with these technologies like github copilot or these technologies which are able to write code you just tell it uh, how what the problem you want to solve it will be able to write a code so number of people need needed will be different that is one thing secondly previously like let's six months previously or one month back one year back if someone would have asked me what are the must need skill set i would have said i would have said learn coding now i want say learn coding because code to chat gpt bhi kar leta hai things have changed it's more around problem solving that are you able to uh, solve the problem and when i say problem solving understand the business problem convert it into a data science problem come up with uh, few solutions let's say three four uh, approaches and you use this tools to solve it so basically the problem solving has to be good in today's time and secondly use these technologies to get to uh, as a as a tool to get better so i feel that people who are a good problem solver for them the things will remain always good uh, they will the, the money the fame everything will remain everything will remain the compensation will be good but people who are just who 
like don't understand the concept who are just uh, directly starting with LLM. When it will, a point will come when you have to uh, fine tune it or you have to, let's say the output is toxic. You have to uh, unlearn the toxicity or you have to do some kind of that stuff. Then you will read research paper. You will find the mathematics very tough. So if you have the problem solving mindset, if the fundamentals are clear, then the field will continue to grow and you will have a lot of work is what I feel. But if it's just who are just um, uh, writing the code without understanding the details of it, it will be tougher for them. That's why in today's session also, instead of just showing you like how much time it took for the practical part, uh, the showing the notebook, not even five minutes, but one hour or almost 40 minutes we spent in the theory part because that is impo more important. Library mein to kisi ne implement kar diya hai. We, it just took five minutes to implement it, fine tune it. But understanding it, uh, where is the, how it's done internally, what is happening, that is more important because some of the concepts, let's say LoRa is using uh, matrix multiplication to reduce the parameters. Some you can use this concept somewhere else, and you never know kaun sa concept kab use hoga. As Sitis was also saying, he saw the dynamic pricing one and he used in some use case. So understanding the concept is more important than just using it. That is what I feel about the future. <laughs> right, right, makes sense. But what are your thoughts, Manas? Um, so yeah, I think I pretty much agree with things. Like the basics should be strong. And uh, that is what I think this is the long term game. So if your basics and all are good, then and anyway, like it's not that with LLMs, uh, you will not be using. Uh, traditional or you know the old NLP techniques they can come in handy at any place so it's always good to have all the knowledge but again <laughs> it's it's tough like it's mm. it's it's I feel that it's uh someone needs to have all knowledge but it's tough to specialize in it and you know be very good at all so. and and one has to be very smart in using these technologies so recently one of the YouTube channels it crossed million followers and it was a channel of photographer who was uploading photographs and later he revealed the photographs he was uploading was actually gen ai generated and one more thing there is an instagram account of a female model uh where the person doesn't exist it's a ai generated model where yeah, yeah. millions of followers she takes a lot of money um for endorsing brands and it's just a ai generated model so uh if you see these type of things then uh what is the next what is the future for photographers? Will it all be AI generated? It's very, as you said, Manas, I feel it's very hard to predict the future that what will happen. But I would say that if we, one thing that I am pretty sure about is if we have that problem solving mindset and adaptability to adapt to whatever new thing that comes and have the basics clear and then it's fine. We'll do, we'll do okay. Yeah, I think we have to be pretty much on tools <laughs> of whatever comes. Mm. new advancements and then i think he should be good mm. we, we, were sense the, we were discussing the same thing with our colleagues and the core plan that we have come up with is short-term strategy is become the best of the best engineer so you survive for the next few years midterm strategy would be that uh, uh, it's very important that you become a brand or a creator yourself like abhishek is doing he's ahead of the cow i would say uh that's very important because the future would be that either the very large cops like amazon microsoft or the individual creators would exist the the mid-sized companies are shrinking i would say startups would keep coming but either they would be acquired by amazon and all those things uh i'm not making prediction i'm just saying that the midterm strategy should be uh, so people who are as lazy as me become start doing something that don't attach yourself with the company tag right you should have your individual personality and that should be visible across so that's the midterm strategy that we thought of that short term strategy would be to become best of the best engineer obviously problem solving is there midterm strategy would be this and long term strategy is obviously investments so yeah Utsav has his like next 10 years <laughs> planned. <laughs> yeah. It's true. It's true. No, but it's right. baffling how every week something new is there, right? So mm. tough to keep up. Yes, definitely. That's I'm why. I'm wondering how Abhishek is doing. Oh, no. He's so, making videos. 
I told that, that, that no. is true. So I to get overwhelmed with everything. Like even if I open Medium to read, okay. there are so many articles I'm interested in, and then like it it it's very overwhelming. The new things that are coming. It's actually true with everyone. My also the the bookmark list, the saved things that I want to read. It's just growing every day, and I'm not able to keep up with it. only thing that i that one trick that i can suggest you guys is which i do is uh whatever first comes let it settle down whether it's a first or short term trend if something appears that it's there to stay then uh, put efforts on it so like that gorilla one came i haven't read about it in much details but if i will see my log for a week or two if my uh, feed is all flooded with it then i will go and see what that is and also other thing that follow good people over linkedin and also what happens when you follow these good people they will also say a lot of details some good research paper in that way also uh, the learning happens and uh, it's very important to reduce the noise noise as in research paper bahut sare hote hain which are the right conferences research paper to read which are the right people to follow in medium which are the right linkedin people to follow so in that way you are able to uh, like if you are spending time on reading something it should not go on something which is irrelevant right like even after reading you feel like it was just a waste of time so that there are few tricks that i try but even it's overwhelming for me as well to keep up with the pace uh sure A- anyone else left to introduce maybe sachin or kiran we are just wrapping up the call it will be great if you guys also introduce yourself Yeah, uh, I have six hundred. Go ahead, Kiran. You go first. Yeah. Uh, can you hear my voice? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm Kiran Kumar. Uh, I worked uh, in software industry for nearly two decades, <laughs> developing uh, applications and uh, all the systems uh, that business uses and produces data. That next level of technological development, <laughs> like AI and MLR handling now. It's good to see all the developments and uh, be part of it. And uh, yeah, uh, just following up with the uh, different uh, uh, changes. Like I did uh, some work in the initial days uh, when the chat engines were being built uh, based on symbolic logic and all. So now it is uh, yeah. Uh, first came the deep. Uh, So uh, different techniques that uh, uh, deep learning and uh, all these things laid out different uh, foundations for next growth. It's nice to see and uh, be part of it. And yeah, I'm planning to uh, get into this uh, next level of uh, development now. So that's why getting involved in learning basically at this level first. Oh, thanks, Kiran. You you have seen it all. yeah uh abhishek uh, i have one question so this is more of on a personal front so the thing is uh, it's been one year i am into analytics okay i am uh, working in a pharmaceutical based company but now i have a question whether i should pursue this domain only or should i consider the other domain or see different side of things uh because uh, i belong i i done engineering i i done in electronics and communication post that i self taught myself and understood all this stuff and then get into the uh, this pharmaceutical side of thing but now again i am exploring this is a good field to pursue but again there is one question at the end of the day that whether should i pursue this or should i explore the other side of the things so uh, i have worked in e-commerce retail domain and then i moved to recommendation systems yeah and uh, so on and i also talked with many people from different domains i feel that it's more about around problem solving so mm-hmm. if you are finding interesting problems in pharmaceutical then there is nothing wrong with it but if you feel that uh, there there are restrictions that there and there are restrictions in some of the domains for example finance domains finance domain yeah. there you can't use uh, a lot of ai models and all because the model needs to be more explainable or uh, uh, yeah so if you feel there are some restrictions in your domain or you are not getting the right uh, type of problem to solve then definitely you can discover other domains and what is the other one which is superior in your mind that this is the perfect field to explore in a, in a term of uh, this machine learning kind of thing 
what what should be the ideal data site so basically when we say the domain i'm more interested to what kind of data or problems they are working on so where is the more scope wherein we can uh, utilize this llm thing or uh, the more of a generative ai of things everyone is talking about it but how many cases are there where they are actually implementing for now in real as of now in the current market so i feel it can be implemented in real in many use cases but people are not doing it because of latency issues and all yeah and on uh, so people are using it through other way like as i was saying batch in batch mode you can generate the output or you can use it to enhance your features so uh, i think in uh, near future when the latency will go down it will start getting used more and okay. uh, which uh, domain is superior uh, it's more about interest like uh, i would suggest you just understand what other domains are like there can be finance there can be hr even in hr analytics now hr nowadays analytics is used to so understand all the domains which interest you more and for, mm. if you ask me personally for me uh, uh i like more problem solving than the domain i have worked in pricing e-commerce uh, advertisement recommendation so more, for me it's more around uh, problem solving than the domain but uh, okay. it's good to know about different domains so uh, it will be okay as well uh, if i continue in the pharma or us healthcare side of thing and uh, maybe i can switch and understand the different domain as well in a uh, if i see myself when coming down the line 5 years it will be okay whether main pharmaceutical bhi continue karta hu maybe main switch karta hu other domain mein and then i i will come back to this domain matlab that way i can go that is nothing wrong in it yeah yeah there is nothing wrong in it and also you don't need to necessarily switch if you are enjoying then you can read the research and how the blogs to understand how the other domains what type of problems they solve so just to understand what the other domain is you don't need to switch you can you can yeah, i think uh, i want to add something here uh, even in the pharma industry and medical industry a lot of scope is there for uh, different ml and ai models uh, new drugs are yeah. being discovered with help of uh, all these uh, models i think continuing in that is good because uh, so far medical domain uh, is kind of a regulated domain so due to a lot of ethical issues ai models are not being used but in future it, it will change and it will be a huge ex- explosion of uh, yeah innovative products there and different solutions as abhishek was saying i mean problem solving is main foundation of this all these things that is happening and uh, at, especially in medical domain a lot of problems are there still unsolved or yeah. too much uh, too, ma- too many data points to solve and ai ml models are one which can really help there uh, so i mean continuing that will be helpful uh, but if you have curiosity about other industries it's always good to explore and keep updated with some things but overall uh, i think uh, medical is good thing and uh, uh, one other suggestion is like uh, even social data from uh, government uh, sources is huge mm-hmm. so you right. can tap into that and see, try to see uh, how you can solve social problems of india and mm-hmm. uh, help help develop uh, different solutions like uh, one uh, one idea is like uh, uh, of course it it requires com- combining different sources uh you can tap into uh, satellite data and try to analyze them and find patterns mm-hmm. and also help all the farmers uh, with uh, their farming stuff and all so uh, agriculture tech there is uh, yeah. a big scenario in that yeah. side as well. right right yeah because 50% of the population is still agriculture oriented so you can see the impact Uh, if uh, any innovative products come into that and can have on uh, indian gdp so i understand yeah so uh, thank you guys thank you guys for attending and uh, i would uh, we can have more such sessions in future just to discuss ideas and all and if you like the session uh, feel free to uh, leave a feedback or just post in linkedin if you liked it and thanks for joining in future we can plan more such sessions and because you booked this session i have your email ids in future if i plan anything i can just send you a reminder mail if it's fine with you sure abhishek will love to thanks abhishek sure bye, bye. thanks thanks for joining session bye thank you bye